Hello guys, my name is Soki Leiter. Welcome to my ultimate total war guide, where I will give you five important tips that will help you getting that first legendary campaign victory. Now the footage you are seeing is out of Shogun 2, Rome 2, Attila and Warhammer 2, but most of what we are going to talk about today will also apply to the other total war games. Before we dive in with tip number one, I want to ask you to give a thumbs up if you like this video and feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Now without further ado, let's begin. Be aggressive. Now what I mean by that is that playing on legendary means you are somewhat on the clock. You need to take lands and get strong as quick as you can, especially early game. Otherwise you will find yourself in trouble later in the game when you encounter a powerful faction that is way out of your league. Try some things early on and if you lose in the first 20 turns or so you can always begin a new campaign. So focus on military early on. Take risks and make sure that you are never at peace for too long. Always make sure that you are the aggressor and, especially with the smaller factions, try to destroy an enemy faction as quickly as you can. Now this doesn't mean be careless either, because if you are dead too much you will lose also. Every battle and move counts in Legendary because there are no do-overs, but I will get to that later. Putting time and money in your economy is also very important because you're gonna need the income to build your armies, so you are going to have to balance these things. But like I said, early in the campaign it's all about your armies and not an important, if you're playing Rome 2 or Attila, don't be afraid to spend some money on mercenaries for those early fights because it can be very helpful. On legendary you need to be the conqueror, the one that everybody else fears. 2. Total War Stats There are some things that change when you play on Legendary and this may vary in every Total War. For example, in Attila and Warhammer you get a minus 8 public order debuff and in Warhammer the AI even gets a plus 10 public order, so you are dealing with rebellions a lot while your enemy doesn't have that problem that much. This may be also true for Attila, but I'm not that sure. In Rome 2, for example, you luckily don't have this, but you get other debuffs like minus 30 loyalty towards you from the other houses, which is a lot. Also in most of the wars, the base income of the AI really increases when you play on Legendary, so that an enemy faction with only a small settlement can have 2 to 4 armies, while you only may be able to build one army. So don't underestimate smaller factions. Now most of you probably already know this, but on legendary difficulty there is no manual save option. The game auto saves before and after a battle and at the end and beginning of your turn. There is only one save file, so if you make a mistake there is no going back. Now for the battle in terms of AI intelligence, I notice there is not really a difference between very hard and legendary battles. The only difference is that on legendary you can't pause, you don't have a minimap and your camera can't go too far away from your own units. So if you're playing on hard or very hard and you want to do legendary someday, try to avoid the pause button as much as possible until you even forget that's an option. 3. Know your faction. Now this may sound a bit obvious, but it is very important. When you start on legendary you can't afford it if there's still a ton for you to figure out. So you need to know how the mechanics of the faction that you are playing with work and what their strengths and weaknesses are on the campaign map. Of course you will also need to know their units and what type of army build works best for that faction. So when you want to start a legendary campaign, do it with a faction that you know very well or do a dry run first, maybe on hard or very hard, to figure out how they work. For the units you can also use custom battles to find out how you can use them to their full potential and which units you like or dislike. If you want to start your first legendary campaign it makes a huge difference for your success based on what faction you start off with. Here are two factions for each total war covered in this video which I think are good to start off with based on their starting position and army build. For Shogun 2, Chosokabe and Shimatsu. For Rome 2, Rome with the House of Junia and Massilia. For Attila, the Sassanid Empire and the Saxons. And for Warhammer 2, the Dwarves with Torim Grudgebearer and the High Elves with Tyrion. 4. Diplomacy Diplomacy is an important aspect on any difficulty, more so on legendary. Make sure that you are constantly aware of the faction around you, how powerful they are, 
what their attitude is towards you and who their enemies and allies are. Try to make sure that you are never being declared war on by surprise and that you saw it coming if it happens. Even better yet is that if you know it's likely that you're going to be attacked by another faction, you are the first to attack so you have the advantage. Allies can be very helpful especially if it makes sure you don't have to fight on multiple fronts which can be very hard early on. A good thing to do for you, for example, is if you want to expand east but you have a faction to the west that you are not exactly sure of, is to try and get a non-aggression pact or trade agreement with them to avoid the likelihood of them declaring war on you. Maybe you also need to throw some money their way as well. Also, the more factions a faction is at war with, the less likely it will be that they will declare war on you. And lastly, if you and your allies are at war with the same faction, don't forget that you can tell them to attack a specific enemy army or a city. 5. Play battles yourself. Now this doesn't mean that you need to play every battle yourself, that would become a bit boring. I myself do almost every battle where I lose more than 20% of my army if I would auto resolve it. And then it would still depend on the situation. For example, if you're near other enemy armies and your losses would be about 15%, sometimes it would still be best to play it yourself to minimize the casualties. In other situations where you have about 80% chance of losing it, it would still be best to play it yourself. Who knows, you might even win and if you don't you can make sure that the enemy loses a lot of men. This is best to do if you can get to them quickly with another army, otherwise it would just be a waste of your time since the enemy would just replenish or make new units. Now one last bonus tip is to know your enemy. Know what kind of armies you can expect from them. For example, if you are at war with the Huns, make sure that the army that needs to fight them has a lot of spearmen and archers in there to counter their cavalry. Or if you're fighting the dwarves, see if you can make an army with a lot of quick units, archers with good range and cavalry so you can easily flank the slow moving units of the dwarves. And that's it for now guys. Do keep in mind that these tips are based on my own experience with Total War and these are not universal rules. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I wish you all the best of luck if you decide to take on the challenge. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.